Hello, you're watching the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. US Congress approves funds for Israel's Iron Dome. Sahrawi activists targeted using NSO's Pegasus. Rising food prices spark protests in Iraq. And Guatemala passes protection of life and family law. In our first story, the US Congress has approved $1 billion in so-called emergency aid for Israel's Iron Dome. The funding was part of a $1.5 trillion omnibus spending bill for the federal government. It also includes $3.8 billion in security assistance and $500 million in missile defense partnerships. These are part of a 2016 Memorandum of Understanding between Israel and the US. It extends to over 10 years and includes $38 billion in military aid to Israel. Meanwhile, $219 million will be allocated to the Economic Support Fund for Palestinians in Gaza and the occupied West Bank. $40 million have also been allocated for security assistance through Bureau of International Narcotics, Control and Law Enforcement. Another $50 million have been allocated for the Middle East Peace Partnership Act. The omnibus bill also contains the Israel Relations Normalization Act to back Israel's relationships with Arab countries. In September 2021, progressive Democrats had successfully opposed the Iron Dome's inclusion in the stopgap funding bill. However, the chamber then passed a standalone bill to provide the $1 billion to Israel. 420 members voted in favor and only 9 voted against. Activists have repeatedly demanded that the U.S. end its complicity in Israel's settler colonial expansion and war crimes against Palestinians. They have also pointed out that there is nothing defensive about the Iron Dome. Rather, the system expands Israeli impunity, including the bombing of besieged Gaza. Sahrawi activist Aminatu Haider had, has been targeted with the NSO group's Pegasus spyware. Amnesty International found that two of her phones were infected going back to September 2018 and recently in November 2021. Haider has been a leading figure in the struggle for human rights and independence for Western Sahara. She was imprisoned by Morocco twice. While the investigation cannot prove if it was behind the attack, Haider told Middle East Eye that she held Morocco responsible. She also blamed the NSO group, saying that it profited from human rights violations with espionage tech provided to authoritarian countries. Morocco has previously used Pegasus to target people like currently imprisoned journalist Omar Radi. Sahrawi activists have stated that Morocco has deployed various means to extract information and use it to discredit them. Morocco has occupied Western Sahara since 1975 after the withdrawal of Spanish colonizers. The Polisaro Front has been leading the resistance against the country and governs parts of the region called the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. In 1991, a UN-led peace process resulted in a ceasefire and settlement plan. It assured that a referendum would be conducted to decide the fate of the territory. Morocco has still not conducted this referendum. The collective of Sahrawi human rights defenders has documented atrocities not only on the Sahrawi people and their resources, but also on Algerian nationals. Morocco also violated the 1991 ceasefire agreement by sending troops to the Gurgerath area in 2020. Protests broke out in Iraq's southern region this week against a sharp rise in prices of food. The price of cooking oil has reportedly increased by almost 50% and that of flour by 25%. Iraq is dependent on imports of wheat and cooking oil, of which Russia and Ukraine are major suppliers. Trade Minister Spokesperson Mohammad Hanoun has attributed the price rise to the current conflict in Ukraine. Over 500 protesters gathered in the central square in the city of Nasiriyah in the south. They condemned the government for failing to control inflation and prices and accused traders of arbitrarily manipulating prices. A similar demonstration was held in the province of Babil on March 8, where a protester was left seriously injured. Meanwhile, the government announced a series of measures in response to the crisis on Tuesday. These include a monthly allocation of $70 for pensioners whose incomes do not exceed $700 
Allowances will also be given to civil servants earning below $343. Customs duties on food, basic consumer goods and construction materials have been suspended for two months. Officials also arrested 31 people accused of raising the prices of food and abusing citizens. Years of US and NATO-led invasion and sanctions caused massive damage to Iraq's economy and civilian infrastructure. The failure of successive governments to address issues like poverty and corruption sparked mass protests in 2019. The city of Nasiriya was a flashpoint of the unrest. And for our final story, Guatemala's Congress has passed the Protection of Life and Family Bill. People who are convicted of terminating their pregnancy could face a prison sentence of up to 25 years. Abortions are now only legal in cases where the pregnancy poses a threat to life. The bill has imposed harsher penalties on doctors and other professionals who assist in the termination of pregnancy. The legislation was passed with 101 votes in favour on March 8, which marked International Women's Day. Only eight lawmakers voted against and 51 members were absent from the chamber at the time. The bill comes at a time when Latin American countries like Colombia and Argentina have stepped up to expand abortion access. It has also mounted a major attack on the rights of the LGBTQ plus community. It has banned same-sex marriage, defining the institution as being between a man and a woman. Schools have also been prohibited from teaching about sexual diversity and gender ideology. The draft text stipulated that no orientations other than heterosexuality are normal. The bill needs to be signed by President Alejandro Giametti to come into force who appears to support it. Opposition legislators and activists have promised to fight it. Human rights ombudsman Jordan Rodas has also stated that he will challenge it on human rights grounds. And that's all for today's episode. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thank you for watching.